In this video, we will continue our discussion of change in tandem. In other words, how quantities change together. For example, this graph of m of x is both concave down and increasing. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.1. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Number 1, Part A. On what open intervals is f of x increasing? So we are looking for where f of x is rising from left to right. And we can see that f of x is increasing on this part of the graph right here. When they ask us for intervals like this, they are talking about input values. So f of x is increasing from negative 3 to positive 3. When they say open intervals, they mean that the endpoints are not to be included. I have shown this with open circles on this line segment, and we also indicate this in interval notation by using parentheses, as opposed to brackets. Brackets would mean that the endpoints are included, whereas parentheses mean that the endpoints are not included. We will always use open intervals for intervals of increasing and decreasing, and for intervals of concave up and concave down. 1b. On what open intervals is f of x concave down? So we are looking for where f of x makes an upside down bowl shape or like an umbrella shape. So uh, we can see that it's definitely concave down in here. Uh, f of x is concave up for this first part. Somewhere between here and here, it switches from concave up to concave down. It's unclear exactly where that is, uh, but let's estimate by looking at uh, the low point is here, the high point is here. The point of inflection where it changes concavity will probably be right in the middle. So let's guess that it is at zero. Looking at the input values only, we see that f of x is concave down on the interval from 0 to 7. 2a. On what open intervals is g of x decreasing? So where is g of x falling from left to right? We can see that g of x is falling from here to here, and then it's rising, and then it's falling again in this area. Uh, be aware that we have an arrow over here on the left, so this interval will include an infinity. Recording input values only, g of x is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 3, union 0 to 2. 2b. On what open intervals is g of x concave up? So g of x starts off concave up, and then it's concave down, and then it's concave up again. So somewhere in this area is the point of inflection where it changes from concave up to concave down, and uh, I'm just eyeballing it, and it looks like the point of inflection is going to be about here, and then when it changes from concave down to concave up, that point of inflection seems to be here. So g of x is concave up, on this part of the graph, including the arrow. So this interval will include an infinity. And then it's concave down, but then g of x is concave up again for this part of the graph. Again, including an arrow on the end. So an infinity. Looking at input values only, g of x is concave up on the interval from negative infinity to negative 1, union the interval from 1 to infinity. Number 3, part A. For the closed interval from negative 5 to 7, on what intervals is h of x increasing? So we are looking for where h of x is rising from left to right, but we are not going to go past negative 5. So this first branch is rising. And you know what? The second branch is also rising. Even though we see these less than or equal to signs, 
When we write intervals of increasing and decreasing, we should never include the endpoints. So this first branch where h of x is increasing goes from negative 5 to positive 2. Uh, the directions told us not to go past negative 5. So we start with the interval from negative 5 to 2, and that covers the first branch. We have to be careful to skip over this vertical asymptote where uh, h of x is undefined. So we do negative 5 to 2 union, and the second branch is increasing from 2 to 7. We are told not to go past 7. 3b, for the close interval from negative 5 to 7, on what intervals is h of x concave up? This first branch is concave up, while the second branch is concave down. We just have to be careful to respect the interval that we were given in the directions. So we will start here at negative 5, and we will go all the way up to the asymptote. So from negative 5 to 2, this part of the graph is concave up. Focusing on the input values only, this is the interval from negative 5 to 2. 4a, on what open intervals is k of x both increasing and concave down? Let's start with increasing. k of x is increasing, meaning rising, for this part of the graph, and then again for this part of the graph. We are looking for the intervals where k of x is both increasing and concave down. So what part of this orange part is also concave down? That's only going to be this first orange piece right here. Uh, k of x is concave down from here to about here, and then it's concave up after that. So the orange part that is concave down is this part. So this is the part of the graph that is both increasing and concave down. Recording only the input values, we say that k of x is increasing and concave down on the interval from negative 6 to negative 3. 4b, on what open intervals is k of x both decreasing and concave up? Well, k of x is decreasing for this portion of the graph right here. But we also need it to be concave up. Uh, k of x is concave up in this part of the graph right here. The point of inflection seems to be at the y-axis. So the question is what part of the orange is concave up. So that's going to be from the point of inflection uh, until the end of this orange part. All right, I mean, it continues to be concave up all the way like that, but we just want where k of x is both decreasing and concave up. So that's this part of the graph right here. Input values only, this is the interval from zero to three. Number five, the graph of m of x is shown above. Which of the following best describes the graph of m of x? m of x is increasing because of the way it rises from left to right, and we can see that it is concave down because of how it's part of an umbrella shape. So increasing and concave down, the answer is B. For number six and seven, we need to sketch a function on the axes provided with the given properties. Number six, p of x is increasing on the interval from negative five to one. I'm going to draw some guidelines to help me sketch p of x. So I'm gonna put vertical lines at negative five and one, and looking ahead, I'm going to also put a vertical line at negative two, because that's the other value that's mentioned. Next, across the top, let's label each interval as increasing or decreasing. P of x is increasing on the interval from negative five to one. 
So that's from here all the way to here. So I'm going to label this interval as increasing and also this interval is increasing. P of X is decreasing on the interval from one to infinity. So from here on, P of X is decreasing. So I will label it as such. Across the bottom, I will label each interval as concave up or concave down. P of X is concave up on the interval from negative five to negative two. So concave up from here to here. I'm going to use this symbol for concave up. And concave down on the interval from negative two to infinity. So that's going to be from here on. So I'm going to put a concave down here and here. Now we are ready to sketch a graph of P of X. We don't have enough information to know how high or low to begin. So you can start wherever you want. I'm going to start sort of down low, but in the first interval, P of X should be concave up and increasing. So draw something like this, concave up and increasing. In the next interval, P of X should be concave down, but still increasing. So that's going to be something like this, concave down and increasing. In the final interval, P of X should be decreasing and still concave down. So I'm switching from increasing to decreasing and concave down. And this goes to infinity. So I'm going to put an arrow on the end of this. Uh, maybe I should put a closed circle over here. Your graph could be higher or lower than this, but it should have the correct characteristics in each interval. And don't forget to label your graph as P of X. We were not given any information about what the graph is doing from negative infinity to negative five. So you can pretty much draw whatever you want over here. I am going to just continue the graph sort of as it was going and continue the concave up. Number seven is the same type of problem. I'm going to put a vertical guideline at every input value they mentioned. So I'm going to put one at three and one at negative five and one at zero. Across the top, I'm going to label each interval as increasing or decreasing. Q of X is decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to three. So decreasing, decreasing, and still decreasing. So from negative infinity all the way to three, Q of X is decreasing. Increasing on the interval from three to infinity. So increasing on this final interval. Across the bottom, I'm going to label each interval as concave up or concave down. So Q of X is concave up on the interval from negative five to zero. So that means concave up on this interval right here, negative five to zero. Concave down on the interval from zero to infinity. So that's from here on. So I'm gonna to have to put a concave down here and here. We are not told what is happening with the concavity over here from negative infinity to negative five. So I guess we can do whatever we want with the concavity on this interval. Now we are ready to sketch the graph of Q of X. In the first interval, we need Q of X to be decreasing. We have no information about concavity, so I think I will just make it linear. So decreasing, and I just left it to be linear. In the next interval, Q of X should be decreasing and concave up. So I'm gonna continue the decreasing, but I'm going to now make it concave up. In the next interval, Q of X should be decreasing and concave down. So I'm gonna continue the decreasing, but now I'm going to make it concave 
down. In this last interval, q of x needs to switch from decreasing to increasing while remaining concave down. So I'm going to switch to increasing and I'm going to keep it concave down. And let's put some arrows on the end to finish it off. And don't forget to label your graph as q of x. Remember, your graph could be higher or lower than this and still be correct, as long as it has the correct characteristics in each interval. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.